means the time has come. The time has come, and I trust that you are ready. Welcome, my dear pastor, my friend, and Dr. Ratara. It's always good to see you. The question has been asked, where is the fire? And yesterday, we got a glimpse of where the fire is. So right now, I'm going to hand over to you, sir, as you continue to tell us how we get this fire. Over to you, my pastor. Thank you very much, my dear sister, and thank you very much for prayers and for this, uh, this time. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, we, we talked about um, the step up, you, just, a, just a, rack, ra, a recap for those who could not follow, maybe for one reason or another, we, we know, let's just go a little bit up here of what we have done uh, yesterday. And the step up to is repent and confess. Repentance and confession is so important. You remember Peter repented, Peter confessed his sins. For us to have the fire inside, not outside, there's no other way than to humble ourselves and repent and confess and accept that God has forgiven us. And today, we are going to continue this journey, this step up number three, toward this fire that will burn in, in our bur bones and in our hearts, what is this at the empty tomb? We are going to follow now the, the steps of this servant of God, Peter. You see his journey, his spiritual journey from that time that he was so down. He was so down because he denied Jesus Christ, not once, not twice, but three times, but because of the love of Jesus Christ. That look of Jesus Christ changed his life. And he went back to Gethsemane and he prayed and he confessed his sins. He repented and God has forgiven him. Let's now continue this journey. In John chapter 20, verse 1, verse 1 to 8, I would like us to uh, read that passage and... Um, Find out what has happened to Peter, that that changed his life forever. In John chapter 20 and verse 1 to 8, this is a powerful passage, my brothers and my sister. Right there, you see um, Peter. Peter was uh, sad, but he was forgiven now. But in this uh, uh, John chapter, John chapter 20 and verse 1 to 8, I read what is written here. 20. Now, the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter. Remember that. Came to Simon Peter and to the other disciples, whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he stooped down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. And then verse 6, verse 6, then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloths lying there. And the handkerchief that had been around his head, 
not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. For then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. What is going on here? Peter, Peter went and he saw an empty tomb, empty tomb. That is the first step up. That means a risen savior, empty tomb, a risen savior. If you really would like to have a life, a life of power, let me just uh, go into Okay, if you really would like to have a love, a life that filled with power, we need, we need to have this experience of an empty tomb, the risen savior. One of the reasons why Peter was so afraid that he denied Christ three times was that he saw Jesus Christ already about to die. He saw that Jesus Christ will be a dead savior, not a living savior. And that's why he was so afraid. He was so afraid that he will be, he will be attacked, he will be crucified also. And Jesus Christ, since himself, he will, he will be crucified. You will not have the power to defend him. And that's why he tried everything, try everything to hide because he was very much afraid. Brothers and sisters, many times we think that our savior is still in the tomb. And that's why we get discouraged easily sometimes. That's why we are not very much uh, bold and we try to hide ourselves as well because in our minds, we don't say it, but the way we carry ourselves, sometimes we think that the Lord is still in the tomb. That was the problem of Peter. And that can be also our problem. We don't believe that Jesus is alive indeed. You may have an intellectual consent to say that, yes, I read in the Bible, I know I was taught that Jesus Christ is alive, but deep down in my heart and the way I behave myself, I carry myself, maybe I am not, I don't really believe practically that Jesus is alive. And that brings weakness in our faith. But Peter, once he saw he saw that empty tomb, his life was changed. That Jesus, for him, is no longer the Jesus that was crucified, was beaten, was uh, mistreated, but Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, alive, and that changed his life. So today, it is still the same. Do we really believe that Jesus is alive? Then we need to live accordingly. If he's alive, that means he goes with us in our workplace. When you go to our office or uh, in the farm or wherever we are, we need to see Jesus alive. He's present. Can you imagine? Jesus Christ just comes into your room and to say, yes, I'm here. I'm not talking about the counterfeited, but you believe in our mind that Jesus is alive. That will change completely our life because we know that 
he is alive. Think of Jesus Christ in your car. When you drive, he's just next to you. See, there was this uh, old man in India. He had a kind of, he was well respected, but he has this uh, behavior that a uh, bit strange. You know, in the rural area, sometimes you have the, the, the path, not the, not the road were tarred, but the path. And this old man, when he walks, he does not take the path, but he, he walks beside the path. And people in the village was wondering, he said, what is going on? Why is this old man is behaving like this? But you know, he was well respected and people did not want to confront him. Maybe he would be offended or sad. Then a little boy, you know, the children, they, they don't hide, they talk. So one day, he, this boy, little boy took courage. He said, grandpa, uh, you know, people are talking. Uh, but they don't want to tell you, what is this, my son? He said, you know, um, people are wondering, why is it that you are not taking the path when you walk, but you walk just next to it? And the old man said, you know, my son, I, I am a Christian. And I walk with Jesus Christ. And when I walk with him, I don't want him to be in front of me or behind me. I would like to walk just sit side by side and I give him the path because I'm walking with Jesus. I don't want you to encourage you to, to do it exactly literally like that. But the moral, the lesson of the story is that for this old man, the presence of Jesus Christ who is alive was so real and that changed his life. So let us believe that the tomb is empty. Our Lord is no longer there. He's alive and he's so powerful. He loves us. He can protect us. He can heal us. He can guide us. Also, he, he sees us. We need also to respect him. He needs, we need to please him. He sees us. So let us put that into practice and our lives will be changed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, remember Jesus is alive. And this Jesus who is alive, he wants to spend eternity with you. So our life today must be influenced by that. And that influenced Peter because the tomb was empty. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, many times we think that the tomb is not empty, that the Lord is still in the grave, but He's no longer. He's alive and He loves us and He's so powerful. So here we are, we confess our sins because many times we didn't really practice that, but help us today to live in the presence of God who is alive, the Lord who is alive, risen from the dead. Thank you, Lord, for answering your prayers. We have asked in the name of Jesus.